This is a series. This is my fourth sermon on this. I'll preach one more and I'll be done with it. This series of totally commitment. We preach a series and we're looking at an extract, an exegeme from the text. These biblical truths. These biblical truths. Just slip it down, Jazz. These biblical truths about total commitment. And look at your life. Are you as committed to getting well as she is? As she was, I should say. Last week, we left off with Jesus asking the question, who touched my clothes? Notice that. We talked about that last week. Not who touched me, but who touched my clothes. And we talked about that in Old Testament. She understood that the tassel, the right tassel of the priest, represented with the tassels there in the right corner, if those represented a remembrance of God's holiness and not to prostitute yourself to the world and to the wicked ways of this world. So she, must have, she knew that. She had to know that. She, she had to know that. And when she made that connection, Jesus asked the question. We talked about that last week. And we also talked about, if y'all can remember, when he asked the question, we know in the imperfect tense in the Greek, he was constantly asking that question over and over and over. In the text, it just says, who touched me? And they said it. No, but if you understand it in perfect tense, it was a continuous action. Okay? So he's constantly asking that question. And the, we talked about it last week, just recapping, everybody was afraid. Y'all remember that? Because back in those days, you were not allowed to touch a leader. You were not allowed to touch them. So they thought they was going to get rebuked. And the disciples, not knowing it, acting the secret service, trying to get people off of them, really are almost indignant and saying, wait a minute, all these people around us, we're doing our best to keep them off. And you, how can you ask who touched you? You see these thousands of people trying to touch you? You see this? Y'all remember that? And it's sad, we talked about that, all thousands of people Millions of people in America who's going to church and none of us uh, understand, well, I should say none of us, many people who go to church, very few people have really connected and touched with Jesus. Unfortunately, we're just going through, going through the motions. But she touched him. And we're going to talk about that next week and this week. What was the difference in her? Jesus said, the virtue, the power has come out of me. Not that Jesus is ever drained of power. But hear that as we go forward and totally committed. Totally committed. This woman's crawling on the ground to do that. And Jesus kept, we left off last week and I'll pick up today. Y'all remember in the perfect tense, Jesus if I can uh, do a re social reconstruction of the text, he stopped and he's looking around, who touched me? Who, who touched me? Now, now, Jesus, now, all these people here, let we, let's, let's go. Because, you, you know, you told Jared she was going to his house. You're on your way to heal somebody's daughter, man. We got to get you out of here. Come on, let's go. He says, now, now, who, who touched me, though? Jesus, thousands of people around here, you asking who touched you? He said, who, who touched me? Who touched my clothes? Who? Who? And he's not asking the question because he don't know. Y'all remember that? We left off this week and I'll pick up right here. He's asking the question because he wants her to come forward. She's on the ground, scared. She's on the ground, but she's on the ground and she's healed. And that's why I said it last week and I'll say it again. You could be down and still be saved. So don't let, don't let nobody tell you you're supposed to be a Christian when you mess up. Just say, I'm down right now, but I'm still saved. Amen. Come on, talk to me, somebody. And the truth be told, I'm looking at you eyeball to eyeball. We both down here. Talking about we you supposed to be saved. What you down here with me for? But the scripture says immediately she knew something happened. How many of y'all, let, let me real quick, real quick. How many of y'all got saved and you knew something was different? You know when you were trying to hit that joint, it wasn't the same. 
Talk to me, somebody. That Hennessy revved it. Talk to me, somebody, you know. That fornication. Come on now. You felt guilty. Come on, come on. Talk to me. Talk to me. Christian, stop acting like you ain't. Come on now. Come on. Come on. You cut somebody out, and afterwards you're like, oh, I feel so bad. You know something changed. She's down, and she says, my body's been wrapped with pain for 12 years, but now I know something happened. Yeah. Old folks used to sing a song, he touched me. Yeah. And all the joy that flooded my soul, something happened. And now I know. She on the ground, and Jesus is repeatedly asking this question, who touched me? Verse 33. He's looking around in verse 33. Then the woman, knowing what had happened. Come on now. Watch this. Let me try to extract this text. She knew what had happened. Ma, I don't know how long she was on the ground. And maybe she was stuck and trying to crawl out because, you know, she was on the, on the ground. If you do a social reconstruction of the text and Jesus is saying, who touched me? Everybody, I did not. Then she like, oh, excuse me, can I get out of here? Y'all let me get out of here. And then no one, she said, I can't do this no more. I can't do this no more. Oh, Lord, don't cry, Brooks. I can't do this no more. Some of you are down and doing stuff. But inside of you, sometimes you wake up and say, I can't do this no more. I, I can't do it no more. I know what he's done for me. I know what it feel like now. I know what it feel like before I came to Christ. And I know I can't. She said, I can't do this no more. I can't let shame and fear stop me from doing what I know he's calling me to do. And I wonder how many of us today are afraid to do what he called us to do. Come on now. You know your life done changed. You know how hopeless you were before you met Christ. And you know what I say? Can't nobody tell your story like you. You know why? Because the old folk Cliff used to sing a song. You don't know you wasn't there. You don't know when and you don't know where. What the Lord has done for me. Matter of fact, a lot of us steal testimonies. You hear somebody say, he a doctor in a sick room. He a lawyer in the courtroom. You ain't never been in court. Talking about he a doctor. He a lawyer. You ain't never been in trouble. So she knew. She had to come forward. But here's what we're going to deal with today. Real quick, let me, let, me, let me try to extract this text. Here's what we're going to deal with today. The coming forward, the getting up, the rising up is conflicted. And it's conflicted with two things, fear and faith. Oh, yeah, you ain't got to say, man. Every day we are, have the intersection of fear and faith. Matter of fact, a lot of y'all walked in here today and there's a fight going on within you. There's fear and there is faith. It is an intersection. Talk to me, somebody. There's an intersection where these crowd, these two paths cross. And I've discovered if you're in this thing long enough, fear and faith cross paths almost every day. All of us have the moments of the intersection between fear and faith. My fact, it's like it is a heavy weight pattern. In this corner, fear In this corner, faith, fear tells you, don't you get up. You ain't even graduated from high school. Ain't nobody going to listen to you. Folk going to laugh at you. Don't you get up and tell your story. Fear says, now you done lost your mind. You've been sinning all your life. And the truth of the matter is you still jacked up. How can you tell somebody not to do something when you got five kids by five different daddies? 
How you going to tell somebody that you've been in and out of jail all your life, brother, and don't even take care of your kids? How, 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 how can you do that when you know you still in love with Mary Jane? And on Friday, she your main thing. Fear tells you, fear tells you, you ain't smart enough. Talk to me, somebody. Fear will tell you, you ain't good enough. Fear tells you, you will be the laughing stock. And fear, am, 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 I, am I hitting anybody? Fear will tell you your past will rise up. And you're trying to keep that a secret, but skeletons in the closet will come out. So it's best you just shut your mouth and just crawl up out of here. But yet God is calling you to stand up and tell your story. But in the other corner, faith. Faith steps up and says, yeah, you are jacked up. You are messed up. But Jesus Christ saved you and all your sins. Past, present, and future has been paid for. Faith steps up and says, yeah, they'll laugh at you because the way you look, how messed up your teeth are and how much weight you are and your hair don't look no good. Yeah, 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 they may laugh at you, but I got good news for you. Man, it looks on the outside. But God... Yeah, yeah, faith, faith steps up and says, yeah, you might fail, but you know what? With man, it's impossible, but with God, all things. Anybody got this battle? Anybody got this battle? You, 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 faith steps up and says, you might not be able to do it, but greater is he that is in you than he that is what? Come on. Faith steps up and asks me how I know because faith talks to me every day. He says, Brooks, you afraid to try? Let me ask you a question, boy. Is there anything? Faith steps up to say, haven't you read your Bible? You can go to the throne. And not only can you go, you can go boldly. And I don't know about you, but truth of the matter is, there's a battle going on in us, uh, not just between the flesh and in the spirit, but with the fear and faith. How many of y'all still battling with fear and faith? Some of you won't even try because you're afraid you won't have the commitment to follow through. Pastor, I don't want to start nothing. I can't finish. Well, you didn't stop you from buying that house. It didn't stop you from uh, buying that cell phone. It didn't stop you from having those kids. And the guy know that's 18 years of bills. 21, 22, 35, 47. They still in your pocket. They still in your pocket. But some kind of way you said, I ain't got a pot, I ain't got a window, but I serve a God. But I serve a God. And faith says, I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. And I didn't come this far by faith. So I imagine she's on the ground and she's having the same conundrums that we are dealing with today. But guess what? Sister girl got up. Shout material. Shout material. She gets up. She opens up. Can you imagine her? Can you imagine the text? Can you imagine? Can you imagine her? She's got to be dirty because she's on the ground. She's been had 12 years of issue of blood, so she got a reputation. And she's getting up. Dirty. Scared. Matter of fact, if you put verse 33 up there, we see she ain't smiling. She's getting on her feet. It's a beautiful sight. Can't you just see it? And she's trembling with fear. Tears are coming out of her eyes. And they're looking at her saying, ain't that that? You ain't supposed to be here. Ain't you the... Ugh, she's nasty. 
she dirty. And Jesus is smiling. And, and, and she's trembling. And this is what she did. The scripture says she told. Some of her story. Because she didn't want people to look at her crazy if she tells her whole story. But she told the whole story, and I did a little research. What is the mention of the writer for making the thing? She told the whole truth. She told the whole truth. Watch me. What is the whole truth? The whole truth starts with her. She told her about her blood issue. She says, listen, I ain't trying to be all that. Let me tell y'all something. And I can imagine the more she talked, she probably got a little confident, scared. And she looked at her, all right. Y'all looking at me like I ain't nothing? That's all right. Let me tell you my story. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. I'm the one that, that, that you laughed at. I'm the one who had the issue of blood. I'm the one who got a, a problem that I couldn't help. Yeah, yeah, that's me. It happened to me. It, 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 and I've discovered the church would be a much better place if we were not afraid to tell the whole truth. Because there's people who walk into the church who have come from the same stuff you have, but you walk around like your stuff don't stink. And you ain't always been there. But you're afraid of what folk would think about you if you tell your story. And she said, yeah, 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 I was born all right. And she says, let me tell you, before I had an issue of blood, I had a sin problem. Talk to me, somebody. Talk to me, somebody. We can't feel sorry for her just because she had this issue of blood. Before the issue of blood, and I don't want you getting mad at me. I don't care what you getting mad at me. She had a sin problem before she had the issue of blood. And the sin problem was greater than the issue of blood. All of us are born in the sin. You got a sin problem. Don't make it seem like just because she had an issue of blood, that was her problem. Just the girl before she was, she had a problem. She had a sin problem. She said, I've been messed up all my life. Doing my business. Thinking, I, thinking my stuff don't stink. But I woke up one morning. Monthly time. Blood happened. I said, that's all right, this is a monthly thing. It'll come and it'll go. Next week. Next month. All right now. All right now. It'll go away. It'll go away. Five months. It'll go away. But I kept doing what I had to do. One year. Oh, Lord. Year two. I got a problem. And she probably told them the whole truth. The whole truth is I didn't look to God initially to solve my problem. Talk to me, somebody. Talk to me, somebody. How many of us in here initially did not look to God to solve your problem? Because I thought it would go away. I thought if I ignored it, it would go away. And when that didn't happen, what I did was I looked to man to fix my problem. She said, I looked to doctors. What you look to? What you look to to fix your problem? I spent all I had. I spent all I had. I spent all I had. And instead of getting better, I got worse. And the truth of the matter is, some of us in here today going to leave here not getting better, but going to get worse because you're looking to the wrong thing to solve your problem. Talk to me, somebody. Ask me how I know. I ain't always been no pastor. But she also told her story. And when you tell your story, you can't be the star of your story. And if you're going to tell the whole truth, the truth is you are the most messed up person in your story. The story ain't what your cousin did to you. The cousin ain't what some woman did to you. The cousin ain't what your daddy did and abandoned you. That ain't the worst part of your story. The worst part of your story is you. 
You are the worst part of your story. Yeah, those things happened. Yeah, people did bad things to me. But John Brooks done got John Brooks in more trouble than anybody. She said, but one day, when I was jacked up after 12 years, I heard a story. Somebody told me about this Jewish carpenter. Somebody told me that he could make a way out of no way. Somebody told me, girl, there is one who can heal your body. She said, let me heal about it. Tell me a good story about him. Girl, I saw him one day. I saw him one day. He opened up blind eyes. He healed the lame. Girl, there was 5,000 plus and he had some sardines and some save on bread. And he fed 5,000. Talk to me, somebody. I I heard that when there was a storm on the sea, he walked on water. Girl, and if he can do all of that, Surely, surely, surely he can stop your blood. She said, I want to know this Jesus. And she says, I made up in my mind. Tell me the whole truth. Have you made up in your mind? You're going to do whatever it takes to get better. And I said it and I'll say it again. I know folk don't like this. Most folk love pity. I've been pastoring for 27 years. I've been pastoring 27 years. Some folks have the same problem. They come to me, I tell you what's going to happen. Your hip hurting. Your husband ain't no good. Your kids don't care about you. Same thing over and over and over. I want to know what's the solution. What are you doing to get better? I ain't denying that happened. But what are you doing to get better? Instead of uh, uh, her just sitting there, she says, I made up in my mind that I was going to follow this Jesus. And if you understand reconstruction of the text, you got to understand, I'm sure it was not the first day that she heard about Jesus that she found him. She says, look, I'm going to find out his itinerary, where he hang out, where he going, where he going to be. Wherever he is, that's where I got to go. And sister girl got on her knees and she crawled and she crawled. And they said, listen, he's passing through the city. And she said, if he's passing through the city, I'm going to be there. No, girl, you unclean. She said, you better get out of my way. I don't care about being unclean. I'm going to do whatever I can to get, what's the name? I don't care about money. I don't care about housing. I got to do what I got to do to get to where Jesus is. committed are you to making your family better even if it means walking away from a job are you committed she said I'm telling you my story she said you know my the better part of my story the best part of my story is when I touched the hem of his garment it didn't cost me nothing it said immediately Immediately, the problem that I have for 12 years had stopped. That ain't the end of the story. That ain't the end of the story. And I know ain't nobody going to shout on this. The end of the story. The story is, she said, when I told my story, I was going to get out of town. I was going to go back to my friends. I was going to go mind my business. But he kept on saying, who touched me? He just wouldn't leave me alone. He just wouldn't. Leave me alone. And I'm here to tell you, God done saved you. He ain't going to leave you alone. You ain't got to shout. You can come here Sunday after Sunday and sit in the pew if you want. God going to follow you back to your Mercedes Benz. He going to follow you back to your car. He going to follow you back to Motel 6, wherever you're going. And he going to say, who touched me? How many know God won't leave you alone? He said, I done just saved you to be healed. I saved you for you to tell your story. Talk to me, somebody. Talk to me, somebody. I'm glad that God will not leave you alone. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you got to tell your story. So if she told the whole truth, she said there is no salvation in nobody else but Jesus. 
Nobody but Jesus. That's my story. And I know we ain't shouting today. But the truth of the matter is, there are folk who are here, who are sitting down on your story. God done changed you. He done done the miraculous. And yet you think the only thing you're going to do is touch his hem and walk and get away? You ain't going nowhere. As Jonah. You will end up in a fish. As Jeremiah. He'll put fire in your bones. God has work for you to do. He kept telling her, who told my story? She got up. She got up. And here's the good thing. Why did Jesus want us to tell the story? Why does God want you to get up and use the gifts that he's given you and to tell your story? Why? It wasn't for him. It was for others. It was for others to hear. And watch this. Here's the shouting material. Here's the shouting material. It was for her. That is beautiful. It is for her. You know why? Don't you cry, Brooks. So many people get saved and still live with shame and fear. And he says, I want to free you. And watch this. Sin is like fungus. It can only live when it's hidden. So what she wanted to do was walk away with nobody knowing her and she was going to run back to her family and live a quiet life and be pronounced clean. And we'll deal with that next week. But Jesus said, no. If you want to be free, tell your story. Take the power away from somebody else. Take it away from them. Take Take it away from them. Take it away from them. The shame and the guilt Eula, she got up and she told her story. Guess what? The shouting material is she was healed physically. But she was free from shame. She was free from the isolation. And notice what happened. Notice what happened, real quick. Notice what happened when she told her story. Notice what happened when she told her story. She had to get up. She had to get up. She had to get up. She didn't tell her story on the ground. She got up. She got up. She told her story when she was up. She told her story when she was up. And she was freed. And it is my prayer today that you walk in freedom. It is my prayer that the guilt and the shame of your past, whatever you've done, not only is God saving your soul, He's cleansing you from every shame or guilt that you've ever, ever done. I think that's where they got that song from. There's an army rising up. Can't you see her rising up? Why? To break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. And I'm discovered here in Macedonia after 27 years. A lot of you are saved and are healed, but you refuse to get up. For whatever your reason is, 
For whatever your reason is. Maybe it's just you're just lazy. Whatever it is, I love you. But I'm asking you today. Get up. Not just physically, but do the work. Do the work. Do the work. Tell your story. Go into the prisons. And when that gets out, come on, Tim. Tell me about this army. Tell me about the army of God. That's rising up. Church, I'm not be begging folk. God has an army of folk who've been saved. God has made a way out of no way for you. But yet you're ashamed and you're sitting down because you don't want your schedule to be inconvenienced. But you want to just come to church and that's it. But you're already saved. Listen to what Tim got to say. Tell us about this army. There's an army. There's an army. Rising up. Get up. There's an army. Faith over fear. Rising up. 